So what's the best manual aerator for homeowners? What options are there out there? Today, I will be going over four different options for manually aerating your lawn, from very cheap options to one that is a bit more expensive. I'll show you how to use them and help you decide which one is the best for you. So let's go. Hey everyone, my name is Sam and welcome to my channel where I try to help you get the best garden and healthiest lawn from an average Joe kind of point of view. I don't do this for a living. I don't run a lawn care company. This is just a hobby. So if you like and find value in this video, please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And also I will put links in the description below for all the tools I will be using today. So aeration is an important part of keeping your lawn healthy and actually stimulate the grass roots to grow deeper and to thicken your lawn. And it can also help relieve any compaction issues you might have. But for some, it can be hard to get a hold of one of these aerators. And buying one is usually not an option because they actually cost a lot. And it's a lot of money for something that you will be using maybe once a year. And renting one might actually also be a challenge, especially in Sweden where I live. I actually haven't found anywhere in entire Stockholm where you can actually rent one of these machines. Just last week I found another homeowner. You can rent his own private machine for about 120 euros per day. Or you can have a professional gardening company come aerate your lawn, but they usually take about 250 euros for that. So it's not cheap to aerate your lawn. You could either pay the 120 euros to actually rent the machine, or you can have someone else do it for 250. And that will add up if you're doing this every year. So today I will be going over why and when you should aerate your lawn. I will be talking about the difference between hollow time and solid time aeration. And then I will be using four different tools and show you how you can manually aerate your lawn and get that healthier and thicker lawn. By the way, make sure you stick around until the end because I will actually show you an extra option that is the cheapest and actually easiest way to aerate your lawn. So first question, why should you aerate your lawn? So your grass needs certain things to survive and thrive in your lawn. It needs water, air and nutrients to actually grow deeper, stronger and thicker. So if you have a compacted soil, that will prevent these three key ingredients to actually reach your grass roots and that will make your grass struggle when it's stressed. So when it's hot outside or in heavy rainfall, your grass will start to struggle and eventually it will grow thinner or even die off completely. So for clay-based soils, you would need to aerate your lawn about once a year, I would say, since clay tends to compact easier than sandy soils. And you can actually do a simple screwdriver test to see if you have any compaction issues. Just take a normal screwdriver, push it into the ground. If you have any resistance, then you might have compaction issues and you need to aerate your lawn. Or if your grass dries out easily or has a spongy feel to it, then you might have a thatch problem. Thatch actually works as a barrier or a blanket on your grass and will actually prevent your three key ingredients to actually reach the grass root. So then you need to do either hollow tine aeration or use a scarifier to actually remove some of that thatch. So you can actually pull a plug from your lawn and see how much thatch you have. Or you can just use a regular shovel to cut out the slice from your lawn and see how much that top layer of thatch is. If it's more than half an inch or about one and a half centimeters, then you need to remove some of that thatch. So second question, when should you aerate your lawn? I would say during the peak growing season. So for cool season grasses, Kentucky bluegrass, fescues or ryegrass, that would be spring or fall time. And for warm season grasses, zoysia, bermuda, that would be late spring or early summer. I would advise against it during the hottest summer periods because you're actually putting holes in your lawn and that would make water evaporate faster. And you have to remember every time you power rake, aerate or scarify your lawn, you're putting some degree of stress into your lawn. And doing that when it's already stressed during those hottest uh, days of the year, that would not be the best idea. So what's the difference between solid tine or hollow tine aeration? The garden roller and the pitchfork are examples of solid tine or spike aerators and these will actually help get water, nutrients and air, make it more accessible to your plant, but they won't actually help against relieving compaction issues you might have. They might actually make things worse since when you're punching holes you will compress the soils around it 
and that will actually add to your compaction issues. So the garden roller or lawn roller and the pitchfork are examples of solid tine or spike aeration. And this garden fork is actually the cheapest tool I will be using today. And then we have this garden roller, which I bought for about 100 euros. So you can either use this as a regular roller when you're seeding or overseeding and you want that good seed to soil contact, or you can attach these spikes to it and do some spike aeration. All you have to do is fill it up with water or sand and you're good to go. So hollow tine aeration will also help get nutrients, air, water into your soil. But since you're pulling plugs, it will also give room and space for your roots to actually grow deeper and thicker. So it will actually help thicken your lawn as well. And hollow tine is the way to go if you want to relieve compaction in your lawn. So over time, any lawn is going to get more and more compacted, either from people walking on it, children playing, or if you run any heavy machinery on it, even your lawnmower will add to your compaction. And a couple of years back, I actually had an excavator run over here. So it compacted my soil a lot and made it bumpy. So for me to be able to fix that, I would need to do some hollow tine aeration and of course some sand for leveling. So one of the tools I will be using for hollow tine aeration is the Swordman fork aerator. I'll put the specs up here for you, but this one has three tines and the best thing about it is this side ejectors. So when you're pushing this into the ground, the plugs will actually come out from the side. So this will help prevent anything to get stuck in your tines. And the second tool I will be using for hollow tine aeration is the Draper fork aerator. So this one has five tines, but as you can see, this one does not have side ejectors. So the plugs have to go all the way through to get out. So I'm actually curious to see how that will do and how much will actually get stuck. And this one is brand new. I just bought it. I've never used it before. So I'm actually curious to use it and see how it works. So now you know why to aerate, when to aerate and the difference between the tools. And if you like this video so far, please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And please let me know in the comments below which of these tools you would use in your lawn. All right, so it's time to do some aeration, but before you start, make sure you mow the lawn and actually make sure it's moist. So either do this the day after it has rained or water it in just the day before. All right, so first up is the garden fork or lawn fork. And for this, you just press this down and make sure you actually just tilt it a bit like this. So you're actually creating some space. All right, so that was the pitchfork or garden fork. Now let's see the holes. You can just see some of the holes. They're barely visible actually. These are some of the holes. And as you can see, the, these are actually pretty small. All right, so it's time for the garden roller with the spikes on it. So one downside to this one is that the spikes aren't actually that long. So if you can find one of these with longer spikes, that would be preferable. But let's try it out and see how it works. This one is actually a lot easier than the pitchfork. You can just drag it, but the holes aren't as deep as the pitchfork and they aren't as wide. So, I mean, this will help, but not as much as the pitchfork. So, so this is the track after the garden roller. You can barely even see any holes. You can see some of the holes here, but they aren't as wide or deep as the garden fork. All right, so now it's time for the Draper hollow tine aerator. I'm actually super curious to see how this works. So let's see. <laughs> okay, I can't even get this thing <laughs> to go down. <laughs> All right, maybe I have some stones or something under there. I don't know. It's been raining all week, so the soil has to be moist. I don't know. This, is, this was a bit unexpected. I don't know, I'll try a few other spots. Maybe it's just hard here, I don't know. All right, there we go. <laughs> Yay. All 
All right. <laughs> this was just after two, two holes. I don't know. I mean, I weigh quite a bit. I don't, I don't know how this is not going through. You can see one plug actually starting to come out. Let's try the swordman and let's see if that one works. Maybe it's just something with the soil here. I don't want to deem this useless just yet. So let's try the swordman where we tried the draper one and see if it works. This is a lot of work even with the swordman. I mean doing an entire lawn like this, that would take some time and effort. So this one worked. Let's just try the Draper one again. Maybe I was just using it wrong, I don't know. Come on. Ah. All right, so these are the holes made from the Swordman. A lot of plugs. This is the exact same spot I tried the draper, so I don't know. So there's different opinions what to do with the plugs when you're done. All I'll say is that you put a lot of time and effort into giving your lawn nutrients. And most of that nutrient is still in here in the grass. And this will actually decompose over time or you can run them over with your lawn mower. So why throw that away? If you think it looks ugly and want to pick it up, then pick it up. I'll leave mine. So I said in the beginning I had a bonus tip for you. The fastest, cheapest and easiest way to aerate your lawn. And that's actually to use a normal drill. I mean, it is the cheapest one since I'm assuming most homeowners actually have a drill at home. If you don't have one, maybe it's not the cheapest option. But if you do have one, all you need is just a bigger drill bit and you can actually aerate your lawn pretty easy. Now I'm not saying you should aerate your entire lawn using a drill. I mean that would take way too much effort and you probably need a good chiropractor. But if you have certain problem areas, so after you water your lawn or after rainfall, if you see that water has puddled up anywhere, you might have some thatch or compaction issues. Then you can use your drill just in that small area to relieve any compaction you might have. So it's perfect for that not for your entire lawn. All right, so this week when it rained a lot, I actually noticed that water pooled here. So I had a big puddle. So that tells me that I have a thatch problem or it's compacted right here. So I need to do something about it. Then the drill is actually perfect for that. So you take your drill. So that's perfect. I probably solved my thatch problem and my compaction issues just using the drill in this small area. Again, I wouldn't use this for my entire lawn, but maybe you don't have that much compaction issues and you just have smaller areas. Then this is actually the fastest and cheapest way to relieve any compaction. 
But as I said, get a good chiropractor if you're doing any more than this. <laughs> so if you just want to punch some holes and make nutrients, air and water more accessible to your plants, I would go with the garden roller. So much easier to push. And if you can find one with longer spikes, that would be preferable, but this one works just fine. The pitchfork also works, but I would use that for smaller areas. I wouldn't use that for my entire lawn. That's just too much work. So the garden roller actually works perfect for that. And just remember the spike aeration, the pitchfork and the lawn roller, they won't actually help relieve any compaction. So I would use the roller or the pitchfork in the springtime when I just want to make my grass come back to life a bit faster, but I would never use it just to relieve compaction because that doesn't work. So which one of these would I recommend? I think you already guessed it. I would go with the Swordman any day. I mean, I couldn't actually get the Draper one to actually work. I, I don't know if I'm doing it wrong or anything, but I mean, the soil is moist. It has been raining all week long. Uh, maybe I'll try it out one more time some other time and really drench the soil. I don't know. But if you had better luck with the Draper, please leave a comment and tell me. Maybe I did something wrong, but I couldn't pull a single plug. Whatever I actually managed to push into the tines, I'm not even sure how I'm supposed to get it out of there. It's really stuck. So I think the side ejector is one of the key parts of this one. It does make it a lot easier and actually works. So I would recommend the Swordman any day. It costs more. I mean, this one costs 170 euros. This one costs about 35, 40. But this one actually works. The build quality is great. I think it will last you a long time. You can actually exchange the tines if they break. But the welds on this one doesn't actually seem that good. I mean, every time I pushed it down, it seemed like any of them could break at any moment and you can't even replace them. And just be warned, it isn't easy to aerate your lawn. I mean, just doing this small section was a workout. So I wouldn't do this on the entire yard because that would just take too long. But it's great if you have sections that are compacted and you actually want to relieve compaction. So I would recommend this any day. All right, so that's it for today's video. And if you liked it, please share, like, and subscribe and all that YouTube stuff. So if you want to know how I strengthen my grass to begin with and stimulate root growth, check this video where I'll show you how I do that. And thanks for watching today and I'll see you in the next one.